And then let me go live. All right. So happy Diwali. Happy. Um, okay, <laughs> we, we got it, I think. So feel free. Um, yeah, today we'll probably have some blocks, some um, need some blocks, some bolster if you have it, and a blanket and a and a eye mask for the end. And I loved what we did last year, Anjali, where we ate a little something sweet, lit a candle to celebrate Diwali. So feel free to to follow that beautiful ritual that Anjali started with us last year. And. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna introduce our goddess today. So feel free just to sit comfortably or just to sway or open up shoulders. Um, feel free to open up your fingers on the ground, your toes, you can just roll around. And so today marks the first day of Diwali, which is the festival of lights honoring the Hindu goddess Kali. Oh, Kali, I'm so excited about this goddess because Kali is the Hindu goddess of death, time and doomsday. She's also said to be the supreme of all powers or the ultimate reality. She dates back to around 600 AD and she's often associated with um, sexuality and violence and um, is also considered a strong mother figure and a symbol of motherly love um, as in the mother of all living beings. Um, she embodies the Shakti, which is this like feminine energy, the creativity, the fertility. Um, but she also destroys the evil um, in order to protect the children or the innocent. So she's, yeah, so she's seen as this like divine protector and the one who bestows um, moksha, which is liberation. But over time, um, Kali has been worshipped by devotional movements all over the place, like, um, and like, especially the tantric sex, um, sects, uh, very, yeah, and so they, they, they've, the correlation they've given her is like to like divine mother or the mother of the universe, which, I mean, we covered mother Mary the other week. Um, this one <laughs> looks very, very different. Um, and so I love the, the image of um, Kali cause she's, you know, she's got this like dark blue skin and like, she's got these like red sunken eyes and like disheveled hair. And she's got these like small fangs like protruding out of her open mouth and like, this tongue rolling out and these reddish um, eyes filled with rage. Um, and she's, yeah, she's, let's just say out of the 54 goddess cards, she's, there's only maybe two that are a little bit, not scary, but they're not as like maidens in the fields with long hair in the springs and um, gentle loving kindness. Um, there, this one, especially, there's just this like, Oh, and this rage about her and this like um and it's not destruction for the sake of destruction um but just I just do want to like you know let's just talk about her appearance a little more that she's wearing this beautiful skirt um made with um cut human arms <laughs> she's wearing a lovely garland of human heads <laughs> or skulls depending on which um which depiction um you know she's drinking blood she's eating flesh um so Kali represents Durga's uh, personification of, of wrath and, and of, of fury. <laughs> so she's standing on the corpse of, um, of uh, Lord Shiva. And we just watched the, a little history for kids because there's so many different legends. Um, I watched it this morning before Ella went to school. And it was just, um, I guess it's been this man who, you know, Lord Shiva, who's trying to make her his wife and she's like no only if you will fight me first and I love that and so she's depicted you know holding this sword and and she's on the battlefield um and this tap, this left arm is holding the sword which is like strength and then the lower hand has like this severed like she's cut his head off which is the per, you know it's supposed to be denoting ego which Kali hates so she's ruthless in battlefield when it comes to cutting the ego and it's she's worshipped tonight on the first night of Diwali in Japan already. I know um, Anjali, not yet tomorrow, but she's worshiped as this destructor of evils in the world. So <laughs> what, um, as we, as we dive in, like what, 
what necessary evils are showing up in your life right now just to to in order to attain moksha or, or liberation um and just a small little popular culture fact the rolling stones um logo which is the the tongue sticking out was actually inspired by kali and the first issue of Ms. Magazine published in 1972, which I love, um, is also, it was of Kali and with her many arms symbolizing the many tasks that we modern women, especially mothers have. So without further ado, <laughs> let's be grateful um, for this destructor of evils. And, um, and let's see how we can just go within and worship that light within that exists always. So without, let's press, um, play if you're watching this in the future let's press play in three two one on the spotify playlist all right whoops and here i go adding more words now <laughs> and let's come and lay on our backs and we will um, put two blocks one and if you don't have a block then just a pillow or a bolster but one across the the bra strap and one underneath our heads. And let's come and bring, and if you don't have a block, then just a rolled up blanket or pillow underneath your chest. You can do the disheveled part. Um, all right. Or just find a, you can even just lay on the ground with your feet together hands apart and just come forward. Holding your arms in different positions the way Kali does with all her different skills. And feel free to close your eyes. And let's take a few deep breaths with the intention to ground ourselves right here and right now. The long, slow belly breath. First deep inhale in through the nose. Loud sigh in, out through the mouth. Second deep inhale in through the nose. Hold at the top. Loud sigh out through the mouth. Feel free to pull your tongue out like Kali. And third and deepest inhale in through the nose. Hold at the top for a count of five, four, three, two, one. Exhale out through the mouth in the Kali tongue. The lion's breath, as we call it. They say everything starts in darkness. Just notice the, even behind your eyes, even though they're closed, just notice the little stars, just little glimmers of light, shimmering light within a blanket of darkness. There's always light. said that she's if you were to compare it to one of the astrological planets she would be Saturn it's not always welcome but it's always necessary and it cleanses for the next the new Just notice where in your body you might be holding some tightness. And with every exhale, just make it expansive. Returning to that purity, that innocence, that vastness. When you're ready, let's remove the block. The song is called Kali. It's got this like ugh, to it. 
And let's come on our bellies. And we're gonna come into Sphinx with roll up. So again, feel free to explore with your different arms, but just roll up with your tongue out and roll down. And explore different. Different placements of the hand. Roll shoulders up and tongue out at the top and roll down the cro cobra. Cobra sphinx. Come back down. Just place your hands down and just massage your forehead on your hands. Just roll your hips out. Let's come into some cat cows. On all fours and just roll up, tongue out on an exhale, roll in, exhale out, a bit more dynamic today. Moving that spine. Exaggerate your movement. Feel free to come on your fingertips at the top. And feel free to look up with your eyes on the inhale or the exhale at the, at the, at the top when you're looking up. And when you're ready, let's just move the spine side to side. So head and hips, you can do the S shape, you can do the C shape, you can do all sorts of shapes. Feel free to just oh what's the word I'm looking for? Okay. Oh, just lubricate. There we go. <laughs> the spine. When you've had enough, lower down your hands and your forehead to the ground. And feel free to do some gentle sway until you come to stillness. It's always a good idea to rub your forehead on the ground. It takes worries away. You'll notice when people are given a bad news, their hands usually go to their foreheads. It's how we figure out the next step. And in the Saturn Kali-esque energy, it usually happens when we're not quite ready to move on. But whatever we can do to feel more at peace in our body, the more likely we will to figure out what the next brave thing to do is. Okay, and when you're ready, let's come into either Sorry. Let's come into, um, hi Lucy. <laughs> you can either open up your toes and then just come back. We're gonna open up the chest. 
otherwise come into full camel if it feels comfortable for you so just onto your knees and gently just anything that will open up your chest you can have your hands down you can look forward up or back and then just slowly come back when you've had enough and come into child's pose we've got about five minutes in this song so just find a pose that suits you today. So it could either be sitting with the arms back, looking forward, up, or all the way back, or into camel. If you're really comfortable with camel, feel free to explore moving up and back with the arms. Highest way of different arms. And leg If you feel discomfort in this chest opening and you've had enough, feel free to come into wide knee child's pose. Again, rolling your forehead on the ground if it's available to you or a block. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Next, when you're ready, come to sit. And you're just going to bend one knee back. And it can be as close, so knees can be as close together as out as possible. If you have any knee issues, then feel free to come to tree pose. And we're just gonna fold 
over the, um, the straight leg. So feel free to have your head supported. And it can be with a bolster, a block. You can also, if you have any knee issues, um, feel free to roll a blanket underneath the extended leg. And you'll see with time, the body does give in, just like with Kali, with time, it gets easier. change sides and about one minute into it the body starts adjusting adjustment of time be gentle with yourself tend to clench the jaw, so just make sure you loosen up the jaw.
When you're ready, let's come up. And let's place the bolster on a block. And don't worry if you don't have one. And if you know that half saddle is possible for you, then just come into half saddle. Make sure there's like a hand distance between you and the bolster. And just come to laying down. And feel free to explore the arm placement like Kali. If you have any knee issues, again, feel free to come into tree or just outstretched or feet together. Lock under your knees. If saddle, half saddle feels comfortable to you and you want to explore a different edge, feel free to bend your straight leg and this could be your edge and you should feel a nice gentle stretch on your thigh and just explore dropping the opposite knee down and to see how this feels. This just feels delicious to me, but for different bodies, it could be not so delicious. So feel free to go to that edge where it just feels delightful and you can breathe very comfortably and delightfully. And just explore throughout the song, moving your arms up and down the way Kali's 10 arm move. of a cat purring in my mind so if you're really comfortable just like a cat in the sun just purring away just feel free to hum or sigh just let your body know that it's not in danger this is the highest form of motherly love I can give to my body externally the advanced pose is that light smile within the Buddha smile which is hardly noticeable on the outside generating that delight And when you're ready, gently you can, depending on your flexibility, feel free to come up and change sides. And different side, different story. Make sure there's a gap between you and the bolster or the ground. Otherwise, just come onto the ground or onto your forearms if you don't have a bolster. And feel free to explore bending your knee if it's comfortable and dropping it to the side. Feels right for you today. Otherwise, both feet together in diamond pose or legs outstretched is fine as well. Reach out to 
can slowly come out. You can come onto your forearms. And next, we're gonna come either in, onto the bolster, or you can also use two blocks as such if you don't have a bolster and lay down. So I'll show it on the bolster. You're gonna sit on the bolster in such a way that if you roll down, the edge of the bolster is gonna be at where the bra strap will be. So you can keep your knees bent, lengthen your head down. And again, our Kali arms, you can choose where and you can move them around as well. If this is um, this feels good to you, then feel free to extend the legs. You can also come into diamond pose. And just relax being lightly inverted. We have quite a couple minutes in this one. So if you're happy here, then just stay here. If if somehow I'll tell I'll let you know when we're halfway through, but if you want, you feel free to push the bolster, the block, the pillow, the rolled blanket, whatever you have, down between your hips, lift your legs, and then open them up. But for now, let's keep opening up the chest. Sure your head is nice and extended far from spine. Again, don't forget the advanced pose of the Buddha smile. Radiating contentment. Looking that light within. Vigilant of moments where you can breathe better. I did notice in which situations, which people, which foods, which pillows, which positions facilitate deeper breathing. the halfway mark so please for a different arm position if you feel like it feel free to push the bolster down if comfortable and bringing your legs up feel very passive you're not engaging your back or your abs it's really just balancing over your hips
Chaps und auf Wiedersehen. So, bye, bye. Feel free to bring um, yeah, knees to chest or towards your armpits. You can roll side to side. Nice, big, divine, motherly love hug. Gently roll back down, move the bolster or the block. And um, I'm gonna, this next is um, Shavasana. So feel free to put a blanket, eye mask, whatever you need, roll that blanket under your knees uh, to be really comfortable and warm and cozy and invite you to light a candle tonight um, to celebrate the first day of Diwali and also to worship this Kali goddess, the destructor of evil and um, happy Diwali. And feel free to relax as long as you want after.